Okay, uh, some things I'd like to point out to you here. This is the road, logging road that's been pushed through an area. This road hasn't been used in quite a while, but what we're doing is using the road to our advantage. They've taken machines and pushed it through. We're in semi-desert country. The hillside's typical of semi-desert country. A lot of rocks, a lot of glacial rounded rocks and streams and rivers. Ancient now. Uh, type of trees that grow here be fir, ponderosa pine, things like that. It's dry country. If you pull down the way, you see it starts to get quite green, which is unusual to begin with because it's quite dry here. Let's have a little walk down the way and I'll show you how to spot an underground stream. Okay, as we walk down the hillside, this is about, about 20 feet up where that dry section of ground was. What I'd like to point out is a couple different things. Number one, it gets green. It's semi-desert country. Yes, rain will turn the area green, but we haven't had rain for quite some time. So let's have a look at what I'm trying to show you here. These are reeds. They will not grow unless they have water. This is one a good example of nature telling us that there's water in the area. I mean, yes, trees grow, but reeds need the water. They have to have it to grow. You can see there's a few reeds growing in this area here, which immediately tells me there's water in the area. Again, this is a hillside. It's not prone to water at all. We're gonna move a bit further down the way here. And as we move down, obviously it's getting greener. But if you look amongst the, uh, the bushes here, you start to see a lot of reeds. Telltale sign of water, in reference to an ancient or old stream. Got some roses growing, they can grow in dry country. The reeds can't as we're walking down. Ferns can take it either way, but again, I'm pointing out the reeds. Now, if we have a look on the hillside here, there's a bit of a trail from animals. You can see the proliferation of weed or reeds that have grown up in this area. There's a lot of them. That there's got to be water here for sure. Okay, lots of reeds. There's probably an underground stream there. We walk down a bit further. Again, amongst the trees, more and more reeds. Now we've hit a bit of a flat spot here as we're walking down. I mean that water or any type of stream would have bottomed out. A couple things I have to point out to you now. Number one, this tree here, just behind all these reeds, is a cottonwood tree. Cottonwood will not survive unless they have a lot of water, like a river or stream. Have a look at the top, have a look at the bark. You can confirm for yourself what it is. It is a cottonwood tree. Pull back down again to the reeds. Now, reeds show water. Foxtail or horsetail are prone to growing on gold, grow on gold bearing areas. They will grow in other spots, but they love to grow anywhere where there's been gold. Foxtails or horsetail, these are actually foxtails. They like gold, they grow on it. A little bit further down. Okay. Here again, the reeds are tapering into this dugout. This has been dug out by machine about three years ago. I only know that because I knew from the owner that they dug this out to accumulate the water. They were aware of water coming down off this hillside as well. Before that, it just had the reeds and it was generally dry ground. So they dug it out and now they've got a big pond here. There's some significant factors about this pond. Again, they're surrounded by foxtails, lots of reeds, which is obvious now because you can see the water. What I want to do is take a pan full of what's in the bottom of this and show you what it is. Okay, uh, this has been dug out as I said before. There's something I want to show you specific about this spot. There's light overburden. In other words, they've dug out this spot and they've got a bit of light sand on top of what's underneath here. Uh, when the guy dug this out, he did not know what he was doing in reference of minerals. Uh, the soil then piled up on the bank there where those other reeds are growing. But in any case, let's get a pan full of this so I can show you. <coughs> We do that by swirling the water around. And the trailing edge here is the area where the heaviest stuff will stay, just due to gravity. Now, that's a lot of black sand. They're hard to see. There's garnets in the pan as well. Yes, rubies can show up the same way. Also, some fine gold in there. We also panned out this little quartz rock. Quartz and granite mixed. It's got a tiny little bit of gold in it just so you can see, minute spots of gold. Again, this has been washed down. It's probably what was carried and why I could dig it out. There's been a lot of settling occur here, and that settling has allowed all the heavier concentrates of actual gold to drop 
quite a bit deeper. Trailing edge of black sand, garnets, very fine gold, trailing in the pan. Now what we're finding as we go down, we're digging a little bit deeper here, black sand, here we have a rock. It's a mixture of iron pirates and gold in the rock itself. It's an, again another excellent indicator. The rocks like this have broken down in the stream and that's what releases the gold. There's a fair bit of it there in this one little rock and that's what we're finding at the bottom of the pan. As I said before, the heavier, the heavier particles of gold drop to the bottom because the gold is suspended in a lighter rock, it stays closer to the surface. It makes it easier for us to dig out. Look, all the nice culvert going out the road. It's draining a stream bed. Obviously, the, the depressions in the culvert itself make excellent ripples. You pretty much need a suction gun to suck out these ripples. Through here. Besides the little rocks, you're going to get the gold accumulating all the way down. Anywhere it can. This is a sluice box. They use it for drainage of the road, but uh, it's premium. When you find a culvert and gold bearing area, absolutely go after it. It acts as bedrock and a sluice box all at the same time, and it's easy to clean up with a suction gun.